the energy we do per person. So there's much more to be wrung out of that sponge with innovation, with investment, and with vision. And one of the reasons that we're moving in that direction and we're realizing that there's opportunity is because of the climate change challenge. It's helping us to frame that and to move that forward. And I just want to close by saying that you are being heard. It's one thing to be on the vanguard. It's one thing to sort of be a leader and to say, hey, we can do this, whether it's the science or the policy or the industry that's saying this. It's another thing to be heard. And I want to tell you that at least in the United States, you are being heard. Two years ago, when California passed its Global Warming Solutions Act, its AB 32, we were the only state in the nation to have such a law. And we were only one of three that had comprehensive climate action plans, which included things like energy efficiency or investing in carbon capture and storage and those types of, of technologies. Only one of three. Today, just two years later, 33 states have climate action plans to reduce greenhouse gases consistent with what they would do if they were separate countries under the Kyoto Protocol. Twelve, including California, now have laws that actually codify and embody those plans, and many more will be passing them in the next, uh, in the next year. Twenty-eight of those 33 states are participating in one of three regional cap-and-trade programs, which include provinces from Canada and states from Mexico. So North America will ultimately in the next year or year and a half have a North American cap and trade program to harness the forces of the market to reduce greenhouse gases. In fact, our 10 northeastern states in the Regional, Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, or REGI, have actually started trading already. And we'll be talking later today about our Western Climate Initiative, which is states and Canadian provinces working together in the western part of North America to do the same thing. We are on the march. We can do this, but it all starts right here. It's up to every single one of us to take this responsibility seriously and to pass it on. The real question is who among us will be the first to say that I can do with a little less, that my children will have a little more? Who among us will be the first to say that my life will not only be measured by the number on the bottom of a balance sheet, but by the balance of clean air and clean water and healthy landscapes that I bequeath to my children? And who among us will be the first to teach our children to answer a call to action that rang out across the world when a president of the United States challenged us to ask not what we can do for our country, uh, ask, ask what we can do for our country. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> that was my George Bush moment. <laughs> ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. And that's true in America or in Canada or in Europe, or in China, or in any part of this great world, if we're going to take these problems seriously and find the solutions together. Thank you very much for what you're doing. I look forward to the conference, look forward to working together with you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. And uh, I guess it, uh, one of the things that your talk highlighted was the importance of uh, policies. Policies, for example, in California that were done 20 years ago, energy policies, appliances standards, building standards, and what a deep impact it has on society and how it frames the possibilities that uh, science and technology can then flourish in. And uh, I think, in a sense, the extension of what we do is uh, framework policies, whether it's in health or the environment or other areas. So thank you very much for your uh, inspiring words.